A mass is attached to a spring and moves in a resistive medium. The motion of the mass satisfies the differential equation d2y dt2 plus 3dy dt plus 2y equals 0, where y is the displacement of the mass at time t. Now I'll explain maybe later in this video or maybe in some other video physically what's going on here, but for now we'll just take it um, purely mathematically. Show that if y equals f of t and y equals g of t are both solutions to this differential equation and a and b are constants, then y equals a times f of t plus b times g of t is also a solution. Okay, um, so what are the consequences of f of t being a solution of this differential equation? f of t, well, we just plug it in here. So if y equals f of t, that means the first derivative dy dt, the first derivative of y with respect to t, which can also be written as f prime of t, will be substituted for here. And our second derivative we can write as f double prime of t. Okay, so um, let's show y equals f of t as a solution of this differential equation. So we have um, d2y dt2 plus 3dy dt plus 2y equals 0. So we, re we can replace this here with f double prime of t plus 3 times dy dt, which we're going to write as 3 times f prime of t plus 2 times y, well, y is f of t equals 0. This is really just a change in notation. There's not much going on here. So we have this relation here. Okay, so we're given that this is true. It's just a consequence of f of t being a solution of this differential equation. Um, now, of course, we could do the same for g of t, y equals g of t, and we're going to get exactly the same form as this, but instead of f, we, we have g. Okay, so here's our second relation. So what, what we want to do in part one is to show that this here is a solution. Um, so if it's a solution, then, you know, we we need to consider derivatives. So just write it down first. y equals a f of t plus b times g of t. This here is actually a linear combination of the two solutions, f of t and g of t. A linear combination means that we, we can multiply the two solutions by any constants, a and b constants, just meaning numbers, a and b, and then add the results. That's what's meant by a linear combination. We're not actually squaring f of t or anything like that. Um, we're just multiplying f of t by some number and g of t by some number, and we can add two together and we should produce another solution. That's actually true in general for any um, ordinary differential equation or linear differential equation at any rate. Um, okay, so let's see if it satisfies this. So we need to get the first and second derivatives. So dy dt is the first derivative. Well, when we're differentiating this, you know, we leave a to one side, that's just a number and we differentiate f with respect to t, and our notation for that is just f prime of t. Okay, so we just have a number times f of t, we just leave the number a to one side, and then we go and differentiate this term here, where the b is just a number, times the derivative of g of t with respect to time, we can write that as g prime t. Or indeed you could write f prime t as df dt, you know. Um, but I'm going to use this notation. <coughs> So that's dy dt. And um, similarly then we can get for second derivative, you know, we just have a times the derivative of f prime t with respect to d. Well, that's just f double prime t plus b times the derivative of g prime t with respect to d. That's g double prime of t. Okay. 
and uh, what we should now do is plug all that into this so that means that d2y dt2 plus 3dy dt plus 2y is going to equal well we just write all of this here for the second derivative plus 3 times the first derivative so that's 3 times this here so we're going to get 3a f prime of t plus 3b times g prime of t and finally we have to add on 2y plus 2 times y so that's 2 times this here so we're going to get 2a times f of t plus 2b times g of t and what we want to do is prove that all of all of this here equals 0 uh, using these two relations that we had um, that we had earlier which come from the fact that f of t and g of t are both solutions so how do we prove that all of this thing here is going to be 0 um, given that we have two expressions here equal to 0 so we need to actually write all of this thing here in terms of these two here so let's see now we can what can we do we, we can uh, let's consider let's consider everything involving f so we have a f double prime of t plus 3a actually I'm going to I'm going to take a out as well I'm going to factorize a out plus 3 f prime of t plus and over here we have another term involving f so we have three terms involving f plus 2 times f of t okay so you might see that this expression inside the brackets here is just this thing here but we know that that's equal to zero as a consequence of f of t being a solution of our differential equation so everything inside this bracket here is zero so this is just a times zero but anyway let's look at the terms involving g so we have b times g prime double prime of t i'm going to take i'm going to take b out and there's another term with g in it plus 3g prime of t and finally we have this one here plus 2 times g of t but of course we have that g double prime t plus g prime of t plus 2 times g of t is equal to 0 so we just have b times 0 here so we end up at a times 0 plus b times 0 well that's just 0 so that's what we had to show so that proves that a linear combination of two solutions to a differential equation is another solution of, a, of that differential equation. A solution of the differential equation is given by y equals e to the power of k times t for some values of k where k is a constant. Show that the only possible values of k are k equals minus 1 and k equals minus 2. Um, so we're given that this here is actually a solution of this differential equation. So if it's a solution, it's got to, that means it satisfies this, of course. Um, we have y. We need dy dt. So when you differentiate an exponential function, well, we just get the exponential function back. But we must multiply by the derivative of the power which is k and we have the second derivative which is well the k is just a constant so it's k times the derivative of e to the power of kt the derivative of e to the power of kt as we've seen already is k e to the power of kt so we get k squared e to the power of kt all right so um, now we can write down our differential equation so we have d2y dt2 plus 3dy dt plus 2y. Well, we know it's equal to 0 for this solution. So now we can fill in everything. The second derivative is k squared e to the kt 
plus 3 times the first derivative, which is k e to the kt, plus 2 times y. That's 2 times e to the kt. That must equal 0. <coughs> now, it's a fact that e to the kt is not equal to 0. It's never equal to 0, actually. Um, you know, unless you're going to include t equals minus infinity, assuming k is a positive constant, you know, then e to the minus kt will go to 0 as t goes off to, um, well, no, sorry, it's not minus, it's plus, as t goes off to infinity. But that's only a minor point, you can just ignore that. Um, what I'm trying to say is, because e to the kt is not 0, we can divide across by e to the power of kt, so what we get is k squared plus 3k plus 2 equals 0 divided by e to the kt is just 0. Okay? All I'm trying to say is that this cannot equal 0, um, no matter what value of, of t we take. So it boils down to a quadratic equation. So for y equals e to the power of kt to be a solution of our differential equation, we see that k is a solution of this quadratic equation. Um, so that means we can we can get we can get values for k. So then we can get our solution y is a function of t. So let's solve this quadratic equation. Um, well, actually, we can quite easily factorize this. Its factors are k plus two times k plus one. Uh, I won't go over that. The next step is to put each factor equal to zero from which we get k equals minus 2, or from k plus 1 equals 0, we have k equals minus 1. So that means we have two solutions to the differential equation. One of them is y equals e to the minus 2t, and the other one is y equals e to the power of minus 1 times t. So these two solutions will actually satisfy our differential equation. If you want to work through the substitution using these, um, you know, it'll break down to zero on the right-hand side. So here's the results of the previous part. We have two solutions of our differential equation. In part three, we're told that the solution of the differential equation is y equals a e to the minus 2t plus b e to the minus t. Well, actually, that's just restating what we had in part one, that if f of t is a solution and g of t is a solution, then a linear combination of them is also a solution. So what we're doing here is getting a linear combination of these two solutions. y equals some number a, any number at all, a times e to the minus 2t plus b times e to the minus t is a linear combination of these solutions, which in turn is a solution of another solution of a differential equation. So, um, we're given that. Um, we're also given some other conditions here. We're told that when t equals naught, y equals naught, and dy dt equals 1. And from that information, we can find out what a and b are. Actually, this thing here is called a general solution. General solution of the differential equation. Um, because a and b are general numbers that can take on any values. So, and what we're given here are boundary conditions. Or initial conditions. Initial conditions meaning when t equals naught. So when t equals naught, we get y equals naught. So, we take our general solution, replace y with 0, and replace e with 0. So we have e to the minus 2 times 0, that's just e to the 0, plus b times e to the minus 0. Um, that's just a plus b, because e to the power of naught is 1. Any number to the power of naught is 1. So we have 0 equals a plus b. That's one piece of information. Uh, another piece of information we're given is that when t equals naught, dy dt equals 1. Okay, so when t equals not both y equals not and dy dt equals 1. So we need to first of all get dy dt and set it equal to 1. So we have to differentiate this here. 
uh, we have a that's just just number we leave it to one side we differentiate this exponential and you know you get it back but then you have to multiply by minus 2 the derivative of the power um, a times minus 2 times e to the minus t plus b times minus 1 times e to the minus t and uh, simplifying that's just minus 2 a e to the minus 2 t actually yeah minus b e to the minus t and we have to work out the derivative when t equals naught. So we want the derivative at t equals naught. So first of all, you have to get the derivative and then plug in zero. So we have dy dt. We can write it like this, at t equals naught. So you can just copy this out again, just replace t with naught. But if you replace t with naught, you're going to get e to the power of naught, which is 1. So we have minus 2a times 1, minus b times e to the naught. And we're given that that derivative is equal to 1. So what we have now are two equations. We have this equation here. And uh, we have an earlier equation. Just look back at it again. Where is it? Oh yeah, it's here. Sorry. It's 0 equals a plus b. Let's write it down here again. a plus b equals 0. So between these two equations, we can find a and b. And then we'll have what's called our particular solution. So this is the general solution up here. So when we found a and b, we'd have our particular solution. So we just solve between these two equations, just as simultaneous equations, fairly basic. If we just simply add them together, we have minus 2a plus 1a is minus a. We have minus b plus b is 0. So we get minus a equals 1 plus 0 is 1. So a equals minus 1. And if a is equal to minus 1, we have minus 1 plus b equals 0. It means that b must equal 1. Um, so we can write down what's called our particular solution. This is a solution for the particular values of a and b that we found. Those values of a and b satisfy these boundary conditions. So the particular solution is y equals a. No, not a. We have a. a is minus 1 times e. Uh, let's look at it up here. e to the minus 2t plus b, well b is just 1, times e to the power of that other thing here is minus t. This other power here. 